People who live in a rural area out in the country, what will city folk never understand? I grew up in a tiny town in the south. One weekend, I was visiting from college and pulled up behind a guy on a horse waiting at the stoplight. I was like wow, when did we get a stoplight? I'm also from a one stoplight town, except it breaks all the time, so they put up stop signs. Apparently we used to have two stoplights, the other was strung between two buildings. One of the buildings burned down so they just put up stop signs. On phone to customer service, again. Oh, sorry, we can't ship to PO boxes. I understand that but unless you are shipping with FedEx or UPS, I physically cannot get mail at my house. It's a rural area. Why don't you just get mail at your house? Because I literally cannot. Traffic is almost never a thing. Waiting behind a tractor that's going 20 miles per hour, if he's a real left foot, totally is. And it always takes up 3 stroke fourths of the gravel road so good luck passing him. Lose power in a storm? Better not flush the toilet, your well pump is out too. Corollary, filling the bathtub with water before a storm so that you'll have water if the power doesn't come back for a few days. I honestly didn't understand that this wasn't a thing in the city until recently. I thought losing electricity meant you lose running water. I live in a small city now, moved here recently, and thought I'd have to buy water fill the tub before it stormed. I spend half my time in the middle of nowhere, half my time in the middle of a giant city, so I feel like I've seen both sides. What city folk don't understand is, you go grocery shopping in town on Monday, or whatever day. After Monday, you've now got all the food you're going to have until next Monday. Wednesday night, you get a strong craving for Ben and Jerry's cinnamon bun ice cream? Well, you're not getting any, because it's a half hour drive into town and the only grocery store they're closed at 6 o'clock. Forget to buy an ingredient you needed for a meal? Well, now you're having that meal without that ingredient, or you're having something from out of the deep freeze. But the flip side of this inconvenience is, you can go an entire day without having to talk to or interact with anyone. Yes, there is no, I don't want to eat this, I'll just order a pizza. There is nowhere to just go grab something to eat, unless you want to drive 30 minutes you're cooking or having a sandwich. It's nothing for me to drive 4 hours one way to get to see a specialist if I am having a health issue. I usually make the trip in one day. 8 hours of driving to see the doctor for one 15 minute appointment. There is literally nothing between the small place where we live and the next largest city 4 hours away. We always tell people that are passing through to be sure to make sure your car is full of gas, use the bathroom, and get anything you might want to eat or drink now, because there is nowhere along the way to really stop and do that. My commute is currently an hour and a half, as it's the closest job I found. I think city people would freak out to find out how few people actually lock the doors when they live out in the country. Growing up, we had 6 people living in the house and none of us even had a key to the house. We never locked the house. The excitement is a child of visiting an actual town. Our firefighters are volunteers. I grew up on a farm and if there looked like there was smoke coming from a wayaways and none of your neighbors were burning off having a bonfire that you knew of, you got your truck with the rainwater tank on the back and headed in that direction until you found the fire, especially in fire danger season. I know it's only a mile away, but trust me, we really cannot walk there. Similarly, it's only a mile away so it'll only take a minute or so to drive there, because I always assume 60 miles per hour in the country, a mile in the city can take 5 or even 10 minutes. Our police department has such an uneventful life. One New Year's Eve when I was little, the police on the job had nothing to do, so they stopped at our New Year's party. The officers were showing us kids the inside of a police car and were just casually talking to the adults. After about 10 minutes, they finally got a call to catch a runaway cow. Apparently some farmer's cow got out and didn't know where it went. The police searched for about an hour and never found it. That was the only situation of the entire night. That not having a vehicle can literally not be an option sometimes. For any real groceries I have to drive over a hill at least 10 miles. There is no public transportation or ride sharing. Ditto. My closest neighbor is over a kilometer walk away. The neighborhood gas station is a 5-10 minute drive. 
and the nearest grocery store is well over a 20 minute drive. Literally impossible to live without a vehicle. Two fingers lift off the steering wheel every time another car goes by. Grew up in rural West Tennessee, my grandfather would get mad if people didn't wave back. He would say that he had wasted a wave. You never waste a wave. Aside from everything mentioned, making good with your neighbor, I don't mean drinks every Saturday night, but everyone helps everyone because you will need it. Everything is 45 minutes 1.5 hours away, whether you need some starting fluid for an engine, or he needs some eggs to finish up that pea crust before guests come over, or just help with a little physical labor. Heck, without me asking, my neighbor drove his tractor down the road to clear my snowy driveway. I'm not some old lady, I'm a 30 year old dude with the machinery to do it myself. I've lived in the city, and not only do people not know their neighbors, but when they do it's usually over passive aggressive behavior and not letting little things go. Oh, Jesus frick they planted begonias within 3 feet of the property line which is against city ordinance. WHO cares, what's better, having those begonias 6 inches further back, or neighbors who don't hate you. Had a gf that was upset that I regularly let my neighbors use my hose to fill their drinking water before they got a well set up at their camp. They're my neighbors. I'm not going to make them continue to drink river water. Wanna go to Walmart? Or gamma stop? Okay 40 minute drive here we come. We moved up into the mountains a couple years ago and life up here is different. Everything is far away unless you want to go to the local market that has prices marked up high as a skyscraper. Barely any sidewalks or street lights. And internet is slower. Everybody knows each other, so gossip is an ongoing high thing to talk about, but the lack of traffic and the beautiful view is hard to beat. Silence is not the distant buzz of cars or airplanes overhead. Silence is when even the frogs or crickets aren't chirping, when all you can hear is the rustling of leaves as the midnight wind blows. No random conversations as a couple walk by your window, no bells or horns. My country living is in the middle of the forest on a lake. The only time you hear your neighbor is when they mow their lawn or it's the weekend and everyone is at the lake partying. Other than that, it's mother nature's finest choir. My favorite is when it's snowing and the snow absorbs nearly all the sound. It's unbelievable how quiet it can get. It stormed two days ago, so I have to use mobile data for this, because the Wi-Fi is still out. If you decide to send out a last minute invitation, I require more than 10 measly minutes notice before the event of said invitation. The things I miss out on because I live 45 minutes away from anything. All my plans must be made a week in advance. If I plan to do yard work or something big then I chose that day for a reason. Usually weather. Bit of a pain adjusting to the improv people do in the city. Peace and quiet. Able to see the stars at night. I'm not terribly far from a city, but rural enough to be away from light pollution. Most of the people around me leave lights off at night outside, so nothing really affects sky viewing at night. I have a grocery store, pizza places, bakery, gas station, and liquor store all close enough to be convenient, yet not too close for comfort. Having said that, I grew up in a major city metro area, and I don't miss it at all. I can't believe that I had to scroll down this far to see a post about the peace, quiet and stars. I don't mind living in the city but sometimes I just like to go outside at about 4am if I'm awake, feel that nice refreshing coldness, hear the complete silence that you can hear for miles and just look at the stars in the countryside. Cow tipping. I'd love to meet the idiot that came up with that brilliant idea. I'd love to see someone try and push over a 1200 pound animal that is resting solidly on for legs. It's going to notice you trying to push it, get annoyed, and kick you. It's not fun. You're supposed to sneak up on them while they're sleeping, you say? Good luck, because they lay down when they sleep. I had to explain this to my city folk friends in college, and they still didn't believe me. Pretty sure the idea was invented to troll city people. 11 p.m. is not an acceptable time to meet up for drinks. Sure it is, but it won't be at a bar. It'll be beers around a bonfire. That the clean fresh country scent is usually cow or pig crap. 10 miles isn't far away. It's a 10-15 minute drive. A gun can be owned the same way you own a shovel or rake. It's just another tool. Drinking water and sanitation are both handled on site and are your own responsibility to maintain. Internet connections suck. 
I live out in the country. I hear gunshots all the time. Something is always in season. Or someone is trying to get a critter out of the yard. I don't really pay attention. The neighbor could be murdering his wife and I wouldn't think a thing if I heard shots from their house. Uber is not an option. Funny story about that. My buddy lives in the country on about 16 acres 40 miles or so from Indianapolis. He was at a bar in downtown India and got drunk. He found an Uber willing to drive him home for only $40. He tipped the guy an extra $20 plus took him for a ride on his ATV when they got to his house and burned one with him. Made a friend in the process. Gunshots. Meh. It's a nice day out. Of course they are out shooting. If someone needs help, you help them. It doesn't matter if it's inconvenient or even if you like the person. You just help them because sure as crap you're going to need their help sometime. There is always that one cow, from that one dude, that always escapes to wander the roads at night. And it's 2am, some cop or passing driver wakes you up, asking if that's your dumbass cow standing in the road. Then you have to call your nearest neighbor, to call that one dude, to get his freaking cow, out of the freaking road, again. When my great grandfather started getting dementia, he forgot that he did indeed have a massive cattle farm with a lot of cows. Instead of the one freaking cow it was hundreds of freaking cows just running down the road. Luckily this made them easy to spot and round up. If there is a full moon, you can go outside and you can read a book because it's so bright. I really feel sorry for people in big cities who've never really seen a night sky. Everyone owns a gun and there's nothing weird or crazy about it. Full moon after a fresh snowfall was always my favorite. We'd take ATV rides with the headlights off. That mostly everyone is actually really friendly, at least where I live. As soon as you get off the paved roads and hit the dirt roads, almost every car passing will wave to you. This is kind of funny when I have a friend who lives in the city in the car with me. I'll wave to someone as they go by and they'll ask who that was and I'll say I don't know. They get really confused why I would wave to someone I don't know but that's just how it is here. Definitely, if it's someone you know you actually wave. If it's someone you don't, you give them that two figure hey gesture over the steering wheel. Random gunfire leads to a neighbor's barbecue, not a funeral. It can be hard to even find a part time job that isn't an hour plus away. Freaking Canada geese man, oh my god. We see those sons of B in the city, too. You have been visited by the doggo Yoda, comment master so that strength always accompanies you. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe, I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video, or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.